stock funding, innovation, current business trends, technology, and social media's role in business. And now your host for Startup Nation, Ed Tracy. Hi, everybody. Closing the door. Can you hear me over there, boys? Yep. Awesome. Yeah, yes, we can. Welcome to Startup Nation. Ed Tracy here. Uh, happy Tuesday, America. We have uh, some great guests on today. As you know, we, we like to talk uh, to folks that are in business here in town, that are starting businesses, that have been in business a long time, uh, pit them against each other. Uh, today, we've got uh, two really cool dudes. Uh, I have the fortune of uh, doing uh, some stuff with them at Street Fest. Uh, Jason Mahalik from Backcountry Shutter. You're on TV, buddy. Say hi, America. There hi, he America. Is. And Jonathan Toscano from Spice Guru. Gurus or guru? Guru. Guru. Single. Goo, me too. <laughs> anyway, uh, before we get going, just a couple of things. This weekend right here in the great city of St. George is the St. George Arts Festival. Jason, that starts Friday, is that correct? It does, Friday, and it'll be Friday and Saturday. And you have a booth there, do you not? I do. And do you know the booth number? Lucky number seven. Lucky seven, baby. Right by, right by the merry-go-round. Right by the merry-go-round, yep. also known as my relationships. <laughs> So, uh, and that starts what time on Friday? Uh, 10 o'clock, I believe. 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock. And goes till? I believe 6, 5 or 6. Right. And uh, something interesting this time around, they're going to have a wine garden. Are they? This is the first time ever that the city is going to have a wine garden. Really? On city property. Huh. Who'd have thunk? Yeah. All you drinkers, get out there, buy drink and buy some uh, photography. I wish my booth were right next to that. Right, no kidding, right? <laughs> I bought $15,000 worth of photography, and I don't know why. <laughs> uh, so that's Friday and Saturday. They don't do it Sunday, right? It's just Friday, Saturday. Right. Sunday, uh, Easter. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's Easter. Oh, man. That is Easter. I got to get some stuff for my kids. No. Um, they're too old for that stuff. The Easter Bunny's real, though, everybody. Just wanted to know that. Yeah. Um, so that's Friday and Saturday. Uh, of course, Street Fest is always the first Friday of the month. Uh, this year month it'll be may 3rd uh it's in conjunction with uh iron man so where we normally would be just on tabernacle street and green gate village half of our vendors and food vendors will be on tabernacle the other half will go up the east side of main street up towards st george boulevard to make way for the finish lines for iron man so it's gonna be an absolute fiasco i can't wait yeah it's gonna be fun be a lot of people a lot of people. So we don't know exactly how many people we had for this last one, but uh, the first one we had, what would you say? Are you waving to people over there? You got uh, yeah, somebody on? Yeah, I got him on. I'm he's on, on live stream? Yeah, yeah. Attaboy. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, we don't know. People are saying that we're, well, it's definitely over 10,000 because yeah, that's what we had around, the first yeah. time. Yeah. Second time they said we had more people. I, I've heard rumors we had half a million people there. I could be totally wow. wrong. I could be... You know, overshooting the population that. Population of Southern India. <laughs> hey, yeah. or everybody that lived in my apartment building growing up. <laughs> so um, I don't know. What would you say? How how many people would you say were there? Twelve, maybe uh, between twelve and fifteen, probably. Yeah. So it's it's getting bigger. Yeah. It's definitely getting bigger. And uh, both these gentlemen have have booths there. Jason is our one of our uh, sponsors for the Food Village uh, Backcountry Shutter. How long have you been doing that, by the way? Two years. And. Um, you tell us what you want us to know about why you did it. and So going full-fledged in photography really was prompted by a shoulder surgery that I had last year. Um, I've always kicked around with a camera, always carried it when I was out hiking, um, whether it was either my phone or just a small pocket camera, and then it eventually evolved in carrying a bigger camera and tripod and stuff. But uh, I was guiding – in uh, central Utah at Legacy Outdoor Adventures and ended up... So you're a hiking guide, basically? Uh, it was a wilderness therapy program, gotcha. working with addicts, uh, instilling uh, the wilderness into their lives along the their road to recovery. So uh, I was doing that for a little while and then ended up having a old army uh, injury creep up on me and pretty much eventually forced me to get surgery and took me out of guiding. So, which, like I was telling you before, is kind of a 
blessing in disguise. Sure. So now I'm able to do this uh, full time. So funny how that happens. Huh? It is. Yeah, I miss those guys up there. Miss working with yeah for sure the program. But um, I'm having a whole lot of fun doing this. Cool. Um, so and I, you know, technology changes constantly. So I mean, you know, years ago you had to take photos home you went into a black room or dark room you develop your photos mm -hmm. now everything everybody's got something on their iphone you use traditional cameras right i do yeah digital cameras um years and years ago I, I guess this whole photography journey started with me on the yearbook club in high school and just snapping photos here and there and then uh, so you've always had a love for yeah, photography yeah um gave it up for a little while while i was in the military and then uh I hiked the Colorado Trail in 2016, and it was awesome being able to share photos of the journey as I was going along whenever I could get service or whatever, and um, it really it really helped inspire people to get out, get on the trails, you know, get out of their comfort zone right. some more and do some things. So being able to take pictures is, is awesome, but the story behind them and then being able to help people find their own story is even sure. better, more rewarding. Now, and you're originally from Colorado, correct? Texas, Colorado, yeah. My father was in the oil business, so I bounced all over the globe, really. Wow. Um, it's interesting, because Colorado, to me, is a beautiful country. I mean, it's just beautiful. Um, St. George, southern Utah, a totally different landscape than yep. Colorado. Pretty much anywhere in the world, if you think about it, with the exception of maybe the Sahara Desert and <laughs> and, and Arizona. Yep. But it's beautiful. I mean, if it you is. look at some of the photos you've taken, there's areas of this this southern utah area that i've never been before and mm -hmm. you paint a picture with those i mean every time you take a photo you you can almost tell what's in your mind all right and, that, and that's the beauty of photography sure it's awesome um so you've had this business now is it primarily online you do festivals obviously you're at street Doing fest festivals uh do workshops do um got accepted i've got kind of a hectic uh Art festival. I know he's ready to kill me. Schedule this this year. <laughs> I'm like, hey, uh, will, you, will you be on the radio show? And he's got to put all this stuff together for the arts festival this weekend. He's ready to strangle me. <laughs> I've got the art festival. We've got the art festival this weekend here in St. George, and then next month will be not only Street Fest but a uh, show in Vegas, and then June. Uh, haven't haven't gotten any acceptance for June yet, but July the big show will be in uh, jackson hole really so, got that and then waiting on a few others between sedona and flagstaff and a couple what, others in utah what's the biggest show you've ever done street fest man so far street fest nice. that's not saying it's the biggest it's it's so far he said so far so, so far. far right yeah so. So today street fest tomorrow the world right um so and and so that primarily what you do is you go to these festivals, you set up, you know, set up camp. I mean, and if you've not been to see his stuff at Street Fest, it's amazing. He's right at the entrance of Greengate Village. Can't miss him. He's got two full tents there full of beautiful photography. What's your favorite thing to shoot? Um, wow. Probably either astrophotography or anything with water. So waterfalls, seascapes, rivers, anything... You know, in the photography world, it's known as long exposure photography. So being able to go out there and capture the stars or any kind of bodies of water is awesome to me. It's probably my favorite. So I have no idea how photography works. I just know I point and click. <laughs> I have mil that's, ba that's basically what I'm out there doing. <laughs> yeah, but you, if you drop your camera, you're going to be a little bit more upset than if <laughs> I drop my iPhone. I promise you. True. Um, it, so is there – when you're – Obviously, when you're uh, fo uh, photographing water, especially waterfall stuff like that, moving water, you got to use a different kind of exposure, I would think, yeah. to catch it, right? Because yeah, it's moving pretty quick. There's uh, there's some things that are different when you're capturing waterfalls and uh, stars versus just capturing just a basic your standard landscape um, with. The techniques that I use are pretty commonly known. I'm not using anything proprietary right. or anything like that. It's really just being It's the able Mahalik to, method. Yeah, yeah. It's basically just being able to filter out the noise and right. filter out the, uh, the sunlight a lot of times if I'm shooting in the middle of the day. And 
And do you do just landscape? Do you do people ever? I do every once in a while. Every once in a while, I get the opportunity to do a quinceanera or a wedding or something like that. But you know, shooting people is tough, man. You know, hats off to all the people in yeah, right. Southern Utah and beyond that photograph people because that is a tough business. Um, Southern Utah, if you do one family photo, you have to have a really wide angle lens because <laughs> there's like 17 generations. And I don't have that lens. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Panoramic. You're like, yeah. oh, what What town is that? That's the Smith family reunion. Yeah. <laughs> a ghost town. It's a ghost town. Yeah, exactly. So cool. Yeah, I mean, it's obvious if you look at your stuff, you love the outdoors, you love, you know, uh, nature, and it, and it shows in everything you do. And so I, I appreciate that, and uh, we're, we're, we'll talk more about it. Jonathan Toscano. Yes, sir. Spice guru man. Yes. Okay, so. One of the two. One of two, yeah. He and his brother Josh. Right. Muscle-bound Josh, who apparently is going to get me on some weight supplements or something, right? I hope so. Me too. Man, I am... I can't buy maternity shirts. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I don't look good in maternity shirts. Um, so you guys have Spice Guru. You both served LDS missions, right? We did. In India. In southern India, yeah. Wow, man. That's awesome. Um, and you came off your missions. You're married now. Yes. That's, that's yep. Hence the dazed look. Yeah. Oh. And how long have you been married? I've got stars in my eyes. Oh, yeah. Good answer, buddy. <laughs> I've been married for about 10 months. 10 months? Hard, You're still yeah. on the honeymoon. I know. It's yeah. the best. Yeah, just wait. Just kidding. Um, so you're you got you're married. Uh, both students, you and the wife. Yeah. Right, and your brother's uh, out doing his thing. He's finished with school. Yes. Uh, doing his entrepreneurial thing. Somebody says, "Let's start a food business." Yeah. Right. Basically. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Basically, it started out with an idea. Uh, initially, it, the idea was to do. Um, Bottling spices, like proprietary blends for unique Indian, Indian spices. Gotcha. Yeah. And just to put those together, package them all cool, and sell those. And then my brother came in with the idea, and he said, hey, why don't we do a food truck? And I said, oh, you're right. Why don't we do that? So here we are. So now uh, your recipes are basically came from your mom, your grandma, who I love. What's your grandma's name again? Uh, Daivane. Daivane. But she goes by Deva for sure. Deva. She's adorable. She's cute. She's, she gets me dancing. Yeah. She's she'll, like, she'll get anyone dancing. She's awesome. Um, so, um, you guys have a love of Indian food. Uh, you've got, you know, you have the booth over there at Street Fest. Now. Right next to mine. Right. You guys are <laughs> actually right next door to yeah, each other, which exactly, is kind of funny. Man. Yeah. There's a space in between where we put the little info booth lady. Uh, and, uh. And you guys are literally right next to each other there at the entrance of Green Gate Village. Neighbors. Yeah, I'm pretty grateful for his booth because his the, the great smells coming from his booth attract customers to mine. I bet it so, does. Yeah. <laughs> I bet it does. And the great photos attract customers to us. That's right. They're like, hey, if you like that, go over there. Yeah. Um, so how long have you been doing this? Was Street Fest kind of your first run through with all of this? Yeah. Yeah, we did um, another catering event for a friend's business here in town. But yeah, St. George was our first, you know, public event that we did, and it went really well. And it's the first time we've ever had Indian, East Indian yeah. food at Street Fest, and it's been a hit. Yeah, it's been a hit. I had what? What? You call it a burrito, but it's not a burrito. I it's mean, not a burrito. What is that? It's well, okay. It's served in burrito format. Yes, I'll give you that much. But you don't call it a burrito. It's a biryani burrito. Biryani burrito, and what's in that? Now that so, I've had two or three of them, you can tell me what's in it. <laughs> Any, I don't like trying new stuff, so this is a big thing for me. Oh, really? So, oh, yeah. I'm such a wimp. Oh, man. I, I don't like trying new things. You might get so. a biryani belly, as they would say in India. Mm. It's like a beer belly to us, but the <laughs> Indian equivalent. Dum dum. <laughs> uh, so what's in that? So biryani is India's, like, crowning dish. That's Oh, like, really? Yeah. So it's basically just rice and spices slow-cooked with meat. And in our case, it's tri-tip steak pieces. Oh, perfect. I thought you were going to tell me, like, things I didn't want to know. So, <laughs> all right, good then. I'm good. What's the traditional meat? Uh, chicken or lamb. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, but the same same process of cooking. Um, they usually serve it with uh, fresh onions and crispy onions. And so that's what we toss in when we wrap up the burrito. And we also serve it with this yogurt sauce called raita which is just an infused yogurt sauce. It's mm, like gotcha. yogurt, cumin, 
some carrots and yeah, it's delicious. Yeah. So, um, so you've got the food booth. It's not a truck, but you at some point would like to get a truck. <laughs> working on that right you now. You are working on a yeah. truck. Those aren't cheap, man. No. Are you going to do a truck or a trailer? So we're doing a trailer. Okay. A trailer's a bit more in our price range. We looked sure. at some trucks, and they get up there, man. They get up there. They're, we saw some that are, you know, 80 to 120 grand. So we were like, yeah. Hey, it's a lot of burritos. A lot <laughs> that is a lot of burritos. <laughs> yeah, and I you know, exactly. and you know, you sit there and you go, "Okay, this thing's thirty-five thousand dollars. If I sell these burritos at six dollars a piece, I have to sell fourteen thousand burritos." <laughs> you exactly. know, times seven street fest. Man, we need to step up our game. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Um, so, Jason, you you don't have a storefront. You don't have a no. brick and mortar. Have you ever considered doing a brick and mortar type thing? That's the ultimate goal. Um, the triple threat for me would be to have a gallery somewhere, uh, be on the road doing festivals during the year while the gallery is open and selling online. And so, what would you say right now? Would you say you sell more online or you sell more at the festivals that you're festivals doing? Festivals, for sure. I tell people, you know, it's, it's super difficult in my experience thus far to sell photography online because either the photo looks – absolutely incredible or it's compressed due to social media yeah. st um, standards you know so well, i'm sure it can't do it justice right either. sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't but um you know i did a live feed from the first street fest and people re and that, and you know it's just off the iphone so it wasn't the greatest quality right, right. um shoot but you know, I tell people it's like buying a car. You know, you can go on any of these manufacturers' websites and the vehicles look great, but then when you get to see it in person and look at it and right. touch it and kick the tires, and you know, sure. it's kind of the same thing with fine art photography. You know, you get to see it in person and get to meet the photographer and uh, learn the story of behind the photo and how it was taken and where it was taken and all that stuff. And it's, it's really, ultimately, it's about building connections. Sure. You know, building relationships with people, and um, not only is it that the photo selling, but it's also the story and the relationship that sure. adds value to it also. Do you have, uh, would you say there's a particular type of a photo that's a favorite among your customers? Um, so Street Fest has been awesome for feedback. I know one of the first things that we were told that I'm super grateful for is that they were glad that we didn't have a lot of pictures of Zion. Because I'm sure it's overplayed. It is. And, you know, I don't tell people, you know, I've got those shots. I've got thousands of them. But if you really want a shot for Zion for what I'm going to charge you, it's not worth it, really. You can just go get a great piece um, at the visitor center or right. any gas station uh, right. between here and the park. <laughs> it's like postcards of the Empire State Building when you go downtown right. Manhattan. <laughs> I think I have seen enough of that. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's cool because we've got some things that um, a lot of people have never even seen, you know, or visited to or places, you know, so people say, oh, man, I want to go Jackson Hole or, you know, I got to get out east to Georgia and check out this plantation or I need to get into Arizona more and check out these slot canyons. So being able to kind of expose some of the places that I've traveled to really helps so it's um if i were to pick one that's real popular right now um i've got a shot of shoshone falls in twin falls idaho which is another one of those long exposure shots and it's mm -hmm. got a it's got the double rainbow and the clouds are streaky and colorful and the water looks like foam and that's just probably it's probably one of the pop more popular ones right now do you have to sit i mean i it almost sounds like when you go on a fishing trip with your dad, you got to sit and you just got to wait for the right time of day. Sometimes. You got to wait for the water to be right. Sometimes. And then you cast out, you know, kind yeah. of one of those things. Yeah. Sometimes it's, um, sometimes those, you know, with wildlife, it's like that. You want to shoot wildlife. Yeah. I want to go up to Yellowstone or Jackson Hole or something like that or in Colorado. And, you know, you're looking for that bull moose or that bull elk. Um, waiting to come out of the wood line a lot of then patience. yeah that 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 kind of stuff requires a lot of patience but honestly shooting wildlife is not much different than photographing people yeah you know you just got to wait for that and you just got to 
rapid fire on the camera and just hope you get one good one. But with landscape stuff, it's it's I have the benefits of being able to use a tripod. Right. So I really can just kind of sit there and let it do its thing. And sometimes some of my exposures are real long, seven, eight, nine, ten minutes long. So I just let it rip and hope for the best, really. Gotcha. Uh, have you ever gotten, into, since you're talking animals now, wildlife, you ever get yourself into a sticky situation when you're out there photographing? Um, no. Um, I wouldn't say sticky, fortunately, but you're probably jinxing me now. But um, <laughs> we've, we've got a come, cell phone call from, uh, hey, I'm in a tree. Come yeah, get me. <laughs> we've come pretty close. I've come pretty close to some grizzlies, um, some elk, and some moose. Um, but, you know, same thing I tell everybody about wildlife. They really want about as much to do with you as you do with them. Right. You know, unless True. they're, unless you're in between them and they're young, they're really, I haven't had any bad experiences, but they, bad experiences do happen to people and I've seen it, you know. Well, and you, uh, a lot of these, I'd imagine just any of the photographs that I've seen of yours, you, you don't just take them from the side of the road. You're hiking into some of these places. Yeah. I mean, you're in deep in some of these areas that most people don't go. And that's one of the, I don't want to call it an advantage, but it's one of the things that I enjoy most about my photography is that a lot of times you'll see some of my shots are from different angles. Mm. People appreciate that, you know, and I, I just enjoy the trek getting to those some of those spots. Is there one place that you haven't photographed yet that you've always wanted to photograph? Man, I'm trying to get down to New Zealand bad. Really? Yeah. We're doing a fundraiser for Jason Mahalik, everybody. <laughs> Send him to New Zealand. Call now. Uh, but I have to go with you. Sorry. <laughs> Actually, I am not allowed to leave the country. So. Uh, New Zealand. Why New Zealand? Um, you know, New Zealand's kind of got it all. It's got everything from awesome seascapes and beaches mm -hmm. to towering mountains and really anything, everything in between. So, you know, it's there's, there's – yeah, I haven't been doing this very long. I've been doing it kind of long, not really – but there's, st I still have my checklists of places that sure. have been shot a million times over that I just need to get in my portfolio. Gotcha. Just to kind of, kind of validate and justify myself. So you know, making my rounds, you know, places like, you know, Washington State and Oregon, you know, there's still a hundred and one thousand waterfalls up there that I have to shoot that everybody else has shot, but I've got to get mine. You know. So. Didn't they film Lord of the Rings in New Zealand? I think that's they, did. they did. Yeah. So that's based on a true story, by the way. <laughs> you would say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, man. Oh, I'm I'm on a mission now to get you to New Zealand. Now that's my thing now. Um Jonathan, you can't go because they don't like uh, Indian food in New Zealand. So sorry. That is not true. I know it's not true at all. <laughs> it's not true. Oh, there's a bunch of Indians in New Zealand. I'm sure there is. Oh, I'm sure. Um so what is what's what are some of your favorite dishes? We got about two minutes before we go to our first break here. So let's talk about some of the things you do. So you have your what is it called? Benini? No, what is Benini? Ben, biryani. Biryani. Yeah. Biryani burrito. Biryani which burrito. Which is hugely popular. Yeah. Uh very tasty. What else do you guys do over there? So we've got tikka tacos. Tikka tacos are so it's our recipe of chicken tikka. Uh, topped with our slaw, which is like shredded red cabbage, carrots, and apples dressed in coconut milk. Toss that on there and then drizzle it with our signature green chutney, mm. which is like yogurt, mint, cilantro, ground up. And Now I'm going to show how ignorant I am. I thought that Indians were vegetarians. Is that not the case? No, that's, that's true. Okay. Uh, Hindus um, tend to be vegetarian. Gotcha. I'll, because cow is sacred, right? Right. So. Yeah. See, I'm not as dumb as I look. I know <laughs> no. that. I watch TV. That was good. You have Thank cable. You. you have cable. I have cable. Huh? <laughs> right. I have cable. Actually, I steal it from my neighbor. There you go. So, but I have it. But you have it. So that's what we're working on. So we're we're gonna have vegetarian options and like rice bowls cool. added to our menu shortly because there's a lot of. Vegetarian and gluten-free people. Sure. Oh, gluten-free is the thing these days, man. I don't yeah. know where that came out of, but, man, I... Don't get me started. I know. <laughs> <laughs> gluten-free. We love you, but not a lot. Um, so do you cater Do you cater events also? I mean, it we sounds... Do. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, we do. We cater events. Um, best way to contact us is uh, through social media or through email or text. Uh, We've got yeah. all that information in our Instagram bio, Facebook, and Twitter. Yeah, and you're 21, so you know how to use social media. Right. I so, would hope so. Not like guys like my age. That has to go to my seven-year-old. Hey, can you um, put this in there for me? How do you turn this on? How do you turn this on? It's my dad. My dad's that way. <laughs> um, hey, can you tell me if your Google has this thing? Yeah, dad, we do. Uh, we're going to take a short break. Uh, we are here with Jonathan Toscano and Jason Mahalik. We're talking about Street Fest and their businesses and uh, what makes them tick and where they hope to go. When we come back, we're going to talk about uh, fundraising and uh, some of the issues they've had with getting up and running. And uh, stay, stay with us, folks. We'll be right back. Startup Nation. We'll be right back. Oh, yeah, that's a midnight special. That's a midnight special. I'm Rich Warren, inviting you to tune in to our midnight special, folk music and farce, show tunes and satire, madness and escape. Two hours weekly, ranging from ancient ballads to cutting-edge singer-songwriters, classic Broadway shows, and the latest British comedy, all on the Midnight Special. The Midnight Special, Saturday evenings from 7 till 9 on Radio St. George 100.3. The St. George Recreation Center is full of activities for you and your family, including youth, t-ball, baseball, and softball. Registration for those is now open until April 22nd. You're killing me, Smalls. For more information, go to sgcityrec.org. The City of St. George is a proud sponsor of Radio Dixie 91.3. Hurry up, batter. It's going to be a short game and i got to get home for lunch. If you are a faculty or staff member here at DSU and interested in the use of fire extinguishers, we invite you to join us on April 30th starting at 9 a.m. where DSU will be holding a hands-on training course for those who are interested in extinguishing fire safely with fire extinguishers that can be found all around campus. This course will take place in the parking lot between the heating plant and the campus view suites and will end at 3 p.m. Again, this course is only for DSU faculty and staff. This is Dr. Robert Briggs inviting you to join me this Sunday as I share some of the best sacred music ever written. This week on Sacred Sunday Mornings, Hear My Prayer, Part 2, this Sunday at 8 a.m. and noon on Radio St. George 100.3 FM. Listen to Access Utah from Utah Public Radio. Weekdays at 9 a.m. on Radio St. George 100.3 FM. We welcome you back to Startup Nation. Here's your host, Ed Tracy. That is the voice of Sean Denovan, everyone, who has a great voice for radio, and I do not. Uh, Sean is the fearless leader here at Radio Dixie, and I appreciate his uh, willingness to allow me on the radio. So far, I'm still here. I don't know how many of these. I think I've done four or five, and I haven't been kicked off, so pretty good. There you go. Just wait. <laughs> uh, so... We know a little bit about your businesses and stuff, um, and probably there's a lot of similarities in starting a business. You know, you got to have a dream, got to have a vision. Right. You know, you say, all right, here I am with this. This is something I like to do. I can make money doing this, right? Right. How do you, how do you get it to where it's profitable for you? you both, you're relatively new, much newer than Jason is, but you're still pretty new at this. Yeah. Two, two years, you said, two, three years doing yeah. this. Um <clears throat> In order to do what you want to do, you got to raise funds to do that. I mean, are you? Is it something where you are looking for investors? Is it some, you know? Or do you you want to put a business plan together to take it to the next point? Where? What do you need to do to get it to the next point? Um, you know, photography is it's, it's interesting. It draws an interesting crowd. Uh, people who check out my work, buy my work, admire my work, like landscape stuff, you know, and it's tough because everybody's out there with a cell phone camera telling me that they shoot the same thing and they've got the same photos in their phone and, you know, I should do it this way and I should do it that way, but it's... Everybody has an opinion, right? Yeah, you know, which I I encourage. I love hearing what people are doing. <clears throat> people are outside. I'd rather 
have somebody come and visit my booth telling me that they got the same shot on top of Angel's Landing than not. Right. Because that means they've been up there. Sure. And they actually made the climb. Um, but it's, you know, the, the business side of things is constantly evolving. You know, we watch Shark Tank like every night, every <laughs> night that it's on. For ideas. For go. ideas. And it's. It's a uh, it's a double edged sword, you know. Do you, do you do you seek investors? Do you go into further debt, or do you just try to wing it, you know, one festival at a time? Which basically, honestly, is really where we're at right now because it's fortunately, you know, um, fairly low overhead to yeah. do stuff like that. Yeah, and it's 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 nicer right now, getting two or three bills in the month than it is getting 20 or 30. Right. You know, because <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> um, you know, it can get out of it can get out of control pretty quick. Um, unfortunately, I'm a disabled veteran and so you know, if I do have something quote unquote to kind of fall back on if this doesn't work out. Sure. Um, but that's not my, you know, my passion right. lies. You want to do what you love. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm 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 on the grind from Four thirty in the morning, five o'clock in the morning till ten o'clock at night, trying to build this business and trying to build the brand, and you know, posting on social media and doing videos. He's very good at social media, by the way, like very good. Like yeah. I, I have two or three people that do all the stuff for me for Street Fest, and he's given us ideas. I'm like, why didn't we think of that? <laughs> so he's good at it. He's good. You got to be good, man. Yeah, it's, uh, that's what got to get yourself out there you can't be afraid to put yourself out there and put your work out there um and slowly but surely you know street fest has been great uh with making connections with people and people in the community and you know i've got some people in some very special places sure. around the u.s now that are you know starting to take my work you know more seriously if you will That's and cool. You know, there's been talks about putting some my stuff in some galleries here, there, and everywhere. So it's it's just it's one of those things. It's like really with anything else, the more you put into it, is what you're exactly what you're going to get out of it. Right. And I'd imagine photography is pretty <clears throat> subjective. I mean, you you photograph stuff that you love, that you think is oh man, this is awesome. And yeah. somebody else will look at it and go, eh, it's just a rock. Right. You know, and then you'll have somebody come by and go, I'll buy the whole lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's totally like that. And food's a lot that way, too. You know, I mean, I used to yeah. love watching Anthony Bourdain. Yeah, and, he was and, great. Oh, it was awesome. You know, and he, and some of those things I didn't necessarily care for, but I appreciated, you know, the, the way he thought about, you know, things, and the way he looked at it. And he traveled all over the world. And 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 just as what you do with food, you do with photography. It's 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 a whole other it, it is. It's a whole other world. I mean, uh, somebody. De I heard somebody describe this town. You know, you go other places, like you go to the Grand Canyon, and you know, you take photos, and you're taking photos of the picture. You know, but Southern Utah is the picture. You know, it really is. Anywhere yeah. you go down here, I mean, you walk outside your door, you look right or left, and there's beautiful, you know, cliffs everywhere. And you go to Pine Valley, and you're out in the, you know. Yeah. You're in yep. God's country, you yeah. know, it's, it's beautiful. And so, yeah, I'd imagine you have to really find something that's not only near and dear to you, but something that's going to sell, yeah, you know, people, people want to find, people want to find a connection with my work. Um, I've, I've sold work that just for the mere fact of people have been there, like the waterfalls and twin falls that I was talking about earlier, yeah. they've been there, um, or Jackson Hole, you know, a lot of people who are snowbirds here in St. George, you know, that's their backyard right. during the summer. And to find a photo, a one-off photo down here in St. George, Utah, of all places, of sure. the Milky Way over Grand Tetons is pretty special to them. So, you know, they just want to find a connection with, you know, the photo. And if they can do that, then maybe I got a buyer. That's cool. That's cool. I, I talking about subjective. So, you know, I grew up in New York, Statue of Liberty, Empire State Building, World Trade Center, blah, blah, blah. Uh, my first wife, she's from Boise, Idaho, never been to New York. We're on the ferry going to see the Statue of Liberty and she's bawling. And, you know, because she'd never seen it up close. To her, it's oh, amazing. Right. I'm like, it's just a big copper statue. 
<laughs> but you know, it's it. That's how people look at things. You know, you're like you, you're putting out your soul on canvas, really. Mm. That's really what you're doing, in my opinion. And and somebody will come by and go, man, I feel it. And somebody will go, eh, they need to build condos there or something. <laughs> you know, people just think they think so differently. Um, so. Your right now, your goal is just to get into as many of these festivals as possible. Yeah. Right? And how do you find? How are you finding all these things? Um, like, really online. You know, there's there's a few websites out there right. that are just a a pool of information. Of you know, here's the application. They're very user friendly. Here's the application. The show dates. The show information. The demographics of it. You know, just kind of the same things like you put out to potential vendors at Street Fest. This, they have the same kind of websites for art festivals. Could you imagine doing this 20 year, years ago when the internet didn't exist? Knocking on doors. Man. Yeah. Phone books. Yeah. Yeah. For those of you younger than 30, that's a big book with people's numbers and names in it, everybody. <laughs> Without Google, where would we be? I mean, really, if you I, think about it. And one, one click of a button and the world is at your fingertips. Yeah. Um, do you um, you do a lot of referral business? I'm you know obviously now you've met people at, at Street Fest and you're going to meet people at you know at the Arts Festival. People call you back for repeat business. Um, you know the funny thing is that I've got you know it, this past Street Fest wasn't too great, um, which is cool. But I handed out a lot of business cards, which is great. Um, got a few more followers on Instagram and on a few more likes on my Facebook page which is awesome. Um, but the next day, the next two days, I got a few calls for people who were like, you know what, I, I wasn't ready then, and but I've been thinking about it, no, and I'm just, I'm ready to get it because I don't know when next time I'll be down there for right, a street right. fest again, and can you ship it to us, and yeah. That's awesome. All day, yeah. So it's cool. just plugging along really is what's going to pay off, I think. Um, so uh, do you have any struggles? Is there anything that you do in your type of business that that's a challenge for you? Um, yeah, there's a lot of challenges. Uh, the weather, mother nature oh, yeah. isn't, you know, she doesn't always play nice, but sometimes some of the best, some of my most favorite shots really have been shot during bad weather. Sure. Um, you know, monsoon season will be here right before we know it. So I'll be able to get out there and capture some lightning and stuff like that. But um, on the business end of things, challenges, you know, I, I think just exposure really, you know, it's and, – and really it took me a little while to kind of find my niche, find my way and what kind of photographer do I want to be and how do I want to process my photos. Because I go back and I look at some of my stuff that I posted a year ago or two years ago and – it's. I'm happy to see that my You've skill evolved. set. Yeah, I've evolved. Sure. Um, not in only how I take the photos, but how I process them, and you know, I'm paying more attention to smaller things that I didn't really um, pay attention before. But now, now I'm blowing up my shots, and boy, when you take a shot that looks great on the back of a camera of a three inch screen, three and a half inch screen, it looks great because. It's a three and a half inch screen, you know. <laughs> yeah. But then when you blow it up to a twenty inch by thirty inch, it's like, oh, that really didn't turn out the way that I thought. So now I kind of know I've been printing a few off now enough to know what I need to be looking for and how I need to shoot it and what's going to look good on metal or acrylic. So it's um, in in the same thing in the same token with the business stuff too. It's um things that I didn't really thought I need to pay attention a year ago. Now right. I need to start paying more attention to um, building that customer base. Cause like when I started my website, it was like one of the first things was like, Oh, do you want to, do you want to capture, you know, clients this way? And I was like, I only had two people look at my website in the last six months. So I wasn't really worried about it then now, but now, you know, it's thousands of clicks a day. So now I need to start capturing organically, you know, emails and sending out newsletters and doing what I hate most and spamming people. With, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And I hate it too, but I, I hate doing that. But, I, yeah. you know, I'm going to be, I see, I get it now. I get why companies and successful businesses 
you know, do that. Send out a weekly newsletter or a monthly newsletter via email. So Five, six hundred of them, one guy. Yeah. All it takes is one to say, hey, you know. Right. It's a numbers game. Sure. You know, you know, the more festivals we do, the more successful I'm going to be and the more um, exposure that I'm going to get. You yeah. know, I may not, may, not sell, may not sell anything in Jackson Hole. You know, I'm hoping Jackson Hole makes our year. It's, ex- it's an expensive show to be a part of, sure. but it's uh, hopefully it'll pay off, you know. But I, th- I think, you know, with Street Fest, it's one of those things where people don't come necessarily prepared to buy fine art photography. They don't. They come prepared to buy burritos and <laughs> <That's true>. food, <laughs> funnel yeah. cakes. And, and beer and wine. Right. True. So hopefully, you know, consistency will pay off and um, – you know, in August, September, October, they'll be like, hey, I saw you back here in March. Really wasn't ready to buy anything then. Sure. But cool. See that you still got it or do you still have this shot? Can I buy it? That's what I'm hoping for anyway. And when is that one in Jackson Hole? Uh, the 12th through the 14th. Of May? July. Oh, July. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, and you have, you brought a piece with you. Can you get, can you open it? Is it I fairly? Did. Yeah. So I just picked this piece up. It is of a uh, slot canyon in northeast Arizona that uh, literally only about 150 people have ever had the opportunity to explore to only because, you know, the, the if you know anything about the Navajo Nation, they're pretty – it's a pretty close-knit community, mm-hmm. and their land is sacred to them. Sure. And – they just don't let a lot of people on it, which with all due right. So uh, I was able to get down into this canyon uh, by way of the Navajo people and capture this image, which I haven't even opened yet. So I'm doing a little revealing here. All right. And uh, This is the first, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. St. George first. You're seeing it here first. <laughs> all five of you. Live. Yeah. Live. <laughs> Hopefully they're... Hopefully it's 500. Their interconnect, internet connection is that's, just bad. That's right. <laughs> oh, man. So this print, I'm only going to do a limited and oh, limited it's on metal. edition of. It is on metal. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So. Can you wow. see that? Let's see. Wow! Look at that. Let's see here. Let's see if we can do this. There that's incredible. Now look at that. So this will be. This will be on display both in metal and acrylic at the St. George Art Festival and, you know, the street fests uh, from here on out. So, What makes you decide whether to put it on what type of fabric, metal? Um, my, my, my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, you have a bank account? Yeah. Dictates so many Bragger. Yeah, yeah. Bragger. That's beautiful. What's something like that go for? Um, so if you were to get it on the website, it's about 500 bucks and you know, I'll probably, I don't know what I'm going to sell that show yet. I don't have no idea. So, um, no telling too. And you know, that, that, that brings up an awesome point. I'm thanks for bringing that up. It's, you know, I just want people to understand. And I think there's some photographers out there who could probably agree with me that, you know, when you're looking at fine art photography and people who have put their blood, sweat, and the tears into doing this kind of stuff and having booths and going to festivals and plugging away. You know, people say, oh, you know, that's, well, you know, I could probably just take my iPhone photo and send it off and get it printed for 30 bucks. But, you know, landscape photographers, especially the ones that are doing this full-fledged like I am, have a lot invested in this, not only just time, but, um, you know, the equipment and business insurance and business licenses and permits and gas money, um, you know, all that stuff adds up. So And people, time. I mean, yeah. you, this isn't yeah. something you take a picture off the side of the road. No. I mean, you, you spend maybe days yeah. getting in there, you know? And so, you know, just I just hope that people will see the value. And that's, that's honestly, that's I love St. George, but it's a tough market. Sure it is. It is a tough sure. market. I agree. I agree. So hopefully... Uh, the art festival will bring out a lot of people who not only enjoy landscape photography, but will understand and appreciate the value that is behind the price tag. Sure. 
Jonathan. So yes, you sir. have a you have a booth soon. Hopefully you'll have a trailer. Yes. But they're not cheap. No. And then you gotta license it. Right. You gotta license it with the DMV, with the city, with the county. Yeah. All sorts of things. Cost money to put all that together, right? It does. How are you guys doing this? Are you bootstrapping it? Is uh, have you become best friends with your dad? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Dad, I love you. I, Close family. You're my favorite, Dad. You're my favorite. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> relatives you haven't talked to in years exactly. no nothing like that but we fortunately for us our overhead up until now has been uh, relatively low sure. you know just cost of permits health department um business license and i mean groceries and that's been our our cost up until now and, and it's is, a guesstimate because you really don't when you go to these events you don't know how many people are going to be there you right. know you i mean the first one most of the guys ran out of food because they weren't anticipating that many people Right. Uh, so they came prepared for the second one, and yeah. you know, some some ran out, some didn't, most didn't, I think. And, right. Uh, but it is. It's always a crapshoot when you do stuff like that. What's What's one of your biggest challenges that you have right now with putting all this together? One of our biggest challenges: uh, logistics, getting all of our stuff there that we need to. You know, it's it's so easy. There's so many little things involved in having a booth that it's. Easy to forget, you know, oh, a, a stirring spoon, or right. oh, we need a trash can, or oh, you know, we need, oh, the grill. <laughs> yeah. And so keeping track of that and- As long as you don't forget your all. Bollywood music. They play Bollywood right. music. Have you, you, well, you've heard it. You're right next to them. <laughs> They're jamming out on the Bollywood <laughs> music. Do. I do my little dance for them. It's great. Yes. Yes, you do. I've been working on it. Yeah. Working on it. My grandma Keep loves working. it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so logistics, obviously, uh, you know- uh, Portions, that sort of thing. You know, are you charging the right amount? Right. You yeah. Know? And much like much like what Jason's doing, you know, hey, you know, this is what you need to make, but this is what you want to make. You right. know, because it's based on what you love to do, and and you feel that that's your value. You know. Right. And are you overshooting that? You know, are you not yeah. charging enough? Um, are you giving it away? Yeah. Are you giving yeah. it away? Exactly. You know, competition. Know, yeah. You know, is another. I'm probably another thing. Like you said, there's photographers out there doing their thing with their phones these yeah. days and they consider themselves professional photographers <laughs> you know uh you guys you know you've got competition with other food trucks obviously right. which competition's good i mean i'm, I'm not is. gonna say it's not it keeps you on your toes um you know for you guys there's another indian restaurant you know that opened up in right. fact when i first met you guys that's where i thought you guys came from because right. you kind of started right at the same time you know a lot of people do a lot of people ask us you know have you been to red fort and that's you know that's kind of what differentiates us from the rest of our you know indian competitors i guess right. you could say because you know indian food in the us is a lot of the times it's sit down it's buffet style mm. and it's a little pricey Per person. And one of the best things about Indian food is the street food and the fact that you can go up to this ghetto little cart and get this delicious food for It's like the taco carts in L.A. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah, and so we wanted to bring something like that to St. George. And it's shown to be it profitable. Sure. And, you know, like you said, one of the challenges – is, you know, maximizing our margins. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, some groceries do cost more than others, so it's like, you know, how much do we charge? Right. And how can we increase our margins, keeping our costs down? And so it's been a learning curve for us, and we're getting through it. Are you, are, you it doing any, are you doing any other festivals? Are you planning on trying to get into any of these other things going on? Absolutely, yeah. So uh, we'll be at Street Fest mm -hmm. on May 3rd. And then once we've got the truck up and running, and that's hopefully within the next six to eight weeks, oh, we'll have regular business hours. And so when an event pops up, then we'll be there. And so obviously it's just a bare shell. you got to put the kitchen equipment and all that stuff in it, right? Or does, right. It come, does it come already built with all that stuff? Good question. So there's, uh, there's custom food truck companies. Believe it or not, there's enough demand. I'm that sure there are. Yeah. If if you can buy stretch limos, you can buy food trucks. So <laughs> absolutely, and so they do a lot of the they do you know electrical, they do um, plumbing and that kind of stuff. But we have to provide uh, or we have to secure like generators, propane tanks, refrigerators, freezers, and all that does add up. But and then here in the city, at least you've got to have a commissary. You know, right. you got to have all that stuff. So basically, mm -hmm. you have to have a site outside your truck right. where you've got sinks. 
where you've got a place to keep freezer food, where yeah. you can go and stock and restock, and that, and then you have to be on, you know, on task with permits and, you know, and yeah. make sure that the city and the county's happy there. Up and to code oh, and, it's got to be up to code. You yeah. got to have your fire safety inspection. Right, they're big on that here. It is. Oh yeah, yeah. there's a lot, man. Yeah. You know, when people come to us for at least for Street Fest, you know, the city of St. George requires a three million dollar insurance rider. That in itself is is expensive for some people, and and uh, every, it all you know. Not saying it's not necessary, but there's a right. lot of nickel and diamond before you even get out on the street to do what you do. There is, you know, yeah. and then you go, crap! Now I got to up my prices, or yeah, you know, we got to sell. Gotta be factored in there. Oh, yeah. all of it, man, all of it. Yeah, but but it's what you want to do, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and you got a good feeling about it. Your wife supports you. Yeah, most of the time. <laughs> All the time. Oh, thank she, goodness. She's a keeper, dude. She is. She, I was, yeah, that's, man, happy wife, happy life, brother. Tell that's me. what they say. Oh, yes. I, I that's what it. they say. I have not experienced that ever, <laughs> but someday maybe. Um, what else? What else? What else do you, uh, you have a website yet? So we're primarily on social media. Okay. We do not have a website yet. Instagram, Facebook? Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. And how do we find you? On Instagram, we are Spice Guru Food. And on Facebook and Twitter, we are Spice Guru STG. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yep. And they, you, all your contact information is there if they want to find you. And, yeah. And uh, you do. where we'll be next and, you know, different events coming up. I might have you do my birthday party. Do it. We'd love to. I would love that. Birthday biryani. I'm, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> all right. So that's Spice Guru. Uh, food on Instagram. Yes. And Spice Guru STG on Facebook and Twitter. Yes. Okay. Correct. Jason, website? Backcountryshutter.com. Backcountryshutter.com. And on social media? Instagram, Backcountry Shutter. Facebook slash backslash Backcountry Shutter. Backcountry Shutter. Um, and they can see uh, also, I'm sure you've got photos of your stuff up there oh, yeah. and all the different things you do. They can see your photos. Yep. Actually, you weren't you just up for Best of Southern Utah? I was, yeah. Nominated. How'd that go? Nice. Uh, don't know yet. It's going to be, they do the judging and the announcement on May 20th, I believe. And do they have a big award ceremony and all that stuff? I don't stuff? know. I'll let you know. I'll let you know whether they do or don't. Uh, is, don't the vo is the voting over? It is. Oh, it is over. I voted for you. I know it. Thanks. We pimped that out, buddy. Don't you worry. It was everywhere. Nice. Um, so, um, so social media, I know I miss, I always miss something. Um, is there anything that either one of you would like people to know about you? Uh, any advice you can give them in starting a business? Anything. If you had to do it over again. <laughs> so, you know, for me, I have this thing about, um, even when I'm in the back country, I just, just have this thing of like backtracking because to me it's Ooh, you got about 20 seconds up uh, so you know attention to detail would be my advice to everybody don't right. don't miss out on anything agree Jonathan I'd say come try us come, come try, try it baby it. <laughs> that's come. my advice to everyone backcountry shutter spice guru gentlemen thank you very much you've been on startup nation and we'll be back next week I'm Ed Tracy have a great week everybody we'll see you soon Thanks for listening to Startup Nation with Ed Tracy. For video and or audio of the show, go to YouTube or Facebook, Podbean or Spotify, and search Radio St. George. Or go to RadioStGeorge.com. We invite you back next Tuesday at 3 o'clock for another edition of Startup Nation on Radio St. George 100.3 FM.